Okay, so with the release of the new iPad Pro this week, Apple also launched a smart keyboard with a trackpad built in. So obviously Apple is going all in with mouse support and they really wanted to kind of better the experience of mouse support on the iPad. Now this is coming with iPadOS 13.4, not iOS 14, Apple's already started on iPadOS 13.4. So if you go ahead and install iPadOS 13.4, you will have this experience when using a mouse. Now I have my Logitech MX Master 3 mouse and this is the mouse that I've been using for quite some time now. I have the 2S and that was what I used in my original video showing mouse support on the iPad. You can use any other mouse that has Bluetooth support. It doesn't have to be from Logitech, but I just love these mice and I prefer using them. But basically all you need is a mouse and then an iPad running iPadOS 13.4 and you can go ahead and see the new interface for mouse support. Now today I'll be giving you guys a very short demo on how all of this looks and works and hopefully that will give you guys an idea of maybe if you should be switching over to the iPad and not using any laptop, PC laptop, or maybe a MacBook or a MacBook Pro. Okay, so here we are guys. I have iPadOS 13.4 loaded up on this iPad Pro. This is a 2018 model iPad Pro. So this new design to the cursor and kind of mouse experience is not exclusive to any set iPad. It's actually just exclusive to, as of yet, iOS 13. So let's go ahead and get started in pairing a mouse just in case you guys don't know how to do that. Uh, go into the settings app and then go down to the Bluetooth menu. Now, once you're in this menu, um, you can turn on your mouse. So I'm gonna do that now. And when you turn on that mouse, it should show up in the bottom half of this screen. Now I'm using the MX Master 3 from Logitech. You can basically use any um, Bluetooth mouse out there. It's just that I use this personally for um, my work computer and everything like that. So go ahead and tap on the mouse that you're trying to connect and then it will go ahead and connect to that mouse and you should be all set to go from there. Okay, so now that your mouse is connected, you can actually start using it. And as you can see here, we have the new design of the cursor. Now, previously it was a lot bigger and uh, just a lot more bulky and it didn't really work out so well. Um, so now with this new design in iOS 13.4, it looks more like a traditional mouse cursor and a lot less ugly in my opinion. Um, so let's go into the accessibility menu because this is actually where you're going to find um, some of the controls or uh, customization options for the pointer control. So in accessibility, just go to the pointer control menu. In this menu, you have the increase uh, contrast feature. So basically if you toggle this on, you can see if you look at the cursor closely, it gets a little bit darker. So if I turn that off, it's a little bit more translucent. I personally like it just a little bit darker to know exactly where uh, my cursor is. iPad OS and iOS is translucent enough. I just like something solid in regards to my uh, pointer. Now below that we have automatically hide pointer. So you can go in here and uh, control how your pointer interacts when there's no um, basically activity on the screen. So if I leave it here for uh, two seconds, it should go away and kind of disappear until I reactivate my mouse. Now, of course you can uh, bump this up to however many seconds you want, um, but that is fully dependent on you. Now you might see here that we have new animations when it comes to the pointer control. So um, it's basically grabbing on when it gets close to this control and allowing me to see what I'm controlling. Really cool feature there. I'm really loving that from Apple here and iOS or iPadOS 13.4. Just one of the many changes that they've made in regards to the pointer control. Now color, we also have the option to change the color of the, uh, the cursor here. I'm going to leave it as uh, none basically, but you can do different colors. Um, I personally don't like any of these, but if you definitely want to ensure that you can differentiate the cursor from anything else on your screen, you might wanna go ahead and select a color because those are quite obvious. Now, pointer size. This was also always a major deal when it came to, um, you know, the overall pointer size of iOS 13 has always been really big. When I did my first demo with uh, iPadOS 13, the pointer size was 
really, really ugly, really big, and just did not look good on iPad. So now you can actually change that. So I have it on the lowest setting right now. That's what comes default, but you can raise it up to what we were seeing on the first iteration of mouse support for iPad OS. But you can, of course, notch that back to a more traditional cursor size. Now, pointer animations, this is uh, just animations that pop up with the um, pointer control. I just left that on. I don't think that will make any much of a difference. Now, scrolling speed, this is very important and obviously very important to any mouse. So you can go ahead and select your scrolling speed and how fast it scrolls on your iPad. Now, there's also another menu option here. So it says button customization options are available in assistive touch settings. It actually has a link to that. So you don't actually have to go and find that on your own. You can go to the connected devices. I have my MX Master 3. So one really cool thing is you can go in and customize additional buttons. So if you go in and customize additional buttons, uh, basically you can map it to each button that you have on your mouse. I'm gonna select the forward button on my mouse and go ahead and customize that. So right now it's set to none, but here you can see you have a lot of options when it comes to customization options. Now I'm going to do a simple one. I'm going to set this as my screenshot um, kind of uh, toggle there. And as you can see, that is saved to screenshot. So if I go back to the home screen here and I wanna take a very quick uh, snapshot of what I'm doing, I can go ahead and uh, snap it now, as you saw, the animation is just a little bit slow. So um, you do have to wait just a second, but it is faster than what we were seeing before. And from here, I can go ahead and mark this up. So this is really cool. I can go ahead, mark whatever I want up, um, draw whatever I want on this screen. I can go ahead and select from the different color options. So if I want to do red, yellow, um, I can go ahead and mark anything up that I want to. So um, this is a really cool feature and brings us a lot closer to what we should be seeing in iPadOS as far as um, getting rid of a PC or Mac and kind of using everything on the iPad as a more seamless experience to a productive workflow. Now, a cool example of how uh, the cursor grabs on to certain things in uh, the UI experience of iPadOS is just if you hover over specific apps, it kind of hovers like what you see on tvOS where uh, your Apple TV remote, if it hovers over a certain object, kind of gives you a little bit of animation here, zooms into that object, and just allows you to see what you're actually hovering over. Now it does this with the control center as well. So if you attach onto the control center, you can just uh, press the left click and then that control center will open and you can go ahead and manage anything that you want to. If you go ahead and basically point, click, and drag on these slider units, they will change if you go up and down with your mouse. Um, you can also you know, select music and everything like that. You can customize the controls as music controls, so that's really cool. And there's just a whole lot to do with um, the customization options. If you long press on the left click, that will be basically a force touch. So um, I use it as I use right touch, I think that's a little bit better, but you can hold it down just a little bit longer. But in my opinion, the right click actually works a lot faster. So here's the right click, and here is the left click and holding it down. So as you saw, it's just a little bit faster using the right click option, and that will speed up your overall workflow. Okay guys, so that was our short demo on using the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse uh, with my 2018 iPad Pro running iOS 13.4 or iPad OS 13.4. If you have any comments, questions, or anything like that, leave those in the comment section down below. But my main question to you guys is, is this upgrade the one thing that you needed to push you towards switching over from a Mac, MacBook Pro, or anything like that solely to the iPad? I can say that in my experience of using the new mouse support and seeing that Apple is updating their, their smart keyboard lineup with a keyboard with a uh, trackpad built right in, once they bring Final Cut Pro or any professional video editing experience to the iPad, I'm definitely switching. So that's my opinion. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. Definitely get subscribed and hit that notification bell button to get updates as soon as we release any content. There's gonna be a lot of new content here in the coming days that you will not want to miss out on. So again, guys, thank you all for watching and hopefully I'll be catching you guys in some upcoming content.
Are you getting this really annoying spinning ball of death on your Apple computer? Yes, we have all been there, but I've actually been using a program called Clean My Mac X, and ever since I started using that program, I've never seen that ugly rainbow cursor again. Clean My Mac X allows you to clean up space on your hard drive, protect your Mac from malware, and speed up your device to work as it did on day one of purchase. There's also a ton of other features as well, so go check out the link down below for more info.